Hey y'all, it's Amanda with Tat Mom and the Bag Brigade. Hope everybody's having a good Monday night. It's raining here in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I'm from. I don't know if y'all knew that, where I'm from. <laughs> I've been a little low um, MIA the last couple of days. Um, it's been kind of rough. A little bit rough going for me. Um, I still got this thing in my arm, which is apparently called a midline. Uh, I got one more day of antibiotics um, that we have here at the house. Um, I'm hoping that that's my last day to do it is tomorrow. Um, I go in the morning to um, get my stents out, my kidneys, uh, the, st the stents that are currently in my kidneys from the kidney stone removal surgery I had March 25th. I, I'm thinking that's going to hurt. Just a little bit. Because it's an in-office procedure. It's not like under anesthesia or anything. And unlike normal stents, there's no strings to, to pull and, and, and tug. And, and I would have had these stents out already had they been little strings attached to them. Because I've done that before. When they leave little strings and, you know, after a week or so, you know, just tugged them out myself. Because it's not, it's not painful if there's little strings attached. You can just gently, you know tug them out uh but they didn't do that this time so they have to go in with a little camera and a, and a grabber and grab them out through my re urethra i'll leave that to, i'll just leave that right there anyway but um i've been working on my little cardigan my little hexi card uh, granny stitch uh hexi cardigan this is the first half. Um, I, I got a whole skein of this. Um, well, I got a skein over here. I'll show y'all. It's this um, simple, Simply Yarn B Simply Flawless. Um, it comes in uh, 7 ounces, uh, 420 yards. This color is called Mist. It's like a silver color, which I really like. And uh, it's a low peel um it's a low peel acrylic, 100% low peel acrylic. Now, this this is mis, mis sized because it's claiming that it's a three weight yarn, but it's a four weight all day long because I'm using a six millimeter on this. Mind you, I am getting a really excellent drape, but it is a really thick, it's a very thick yarn. I don't know how in the world they call that a three weight. I really don't. But, um,. I got a whole skein in on this one, and uh, I, I got a partial row started. I'm going to have to attach another skein and, and finish the, this side, but uh, I'm, I'm ever shrinking. I'm down to 273 in my weight as of this morning, so um, yeah, that's about 120 pounds since last um, July that I've lost. So I'm pretty happy about that. At least I have something that I can hang on to and be happy about. Uh, I've been, my moods have been really terrible. Because uh, I'm, you know, struggling with my health and uh, my energy level has been really bad. I took a two hour nap today and and probably will go, still go to bed at 11 o'clock tonight or something, sim something like that anyway. Because I've been, I, I haven't been night owling at all. Um, since I got home from the hospital, I've been going to bed at 11 o'clock every night, which is really not like me at all. I think the latest I went to bed was midnight, but I've been taking my medicine, my nightly mental health medicine, um, you know, early, like at 10, and then going to bed, you know, pretty quickly after. So, um, I just got into this weird routine now, um, but, uh. I don't, I'm, who knows? Once my health bounces back, I'll be back to my night owl ways. I'm pretty sure because I that I've been a night owl for many years. But this is the this is the first half. I got to finish that round. But uh, I don't think it's I don't think I'm gonna do too much more. But add rows here uh, because I just wanted it to kind of be a crop top um, cardigan. I don't want it. To, I, I, it's gonna be a short sleeve cardigan because it's just for a dress it's for a, for a cute little dress that i bought myself and but the, the dress is kind of like a tank 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 top dress 
Uh, so I just wanted a, a short, a little short sleeve cardigan. I don't want it to be, uh, I don't want it to be real big. So, um, I th I'm thinking I'm almost done with this half. Yeah, I'm almost done with this half. I'm just going to finish this row and then, um, make sure that this half has equal rows and then I'll put, put it together with, uh, stitch markers and then try it on and see where I'm at with it and see if I need to add anything. Because I'm, uh, when you go through gastric bypass, like I did, I had a gastric bypass and hernia repair on November 1st, if you're new. And uh, when you lose massive amounts of weight, like I've lost, um, figuring out your new size, uh, because you still, in your head, you still think, oh, I still weigh 415 pounds. You know, I'm still a 4 or 5X. No, I'm a 2, 3X, 2, 2X to 3X now. And I'm in size 22 clothes versus size 36 clothes. And, uh, but when you, you know, when I'm making things, my brain still is in four and five X mode. So I'm, I'm going to really, I'm having to retrain my brain to stop making things so big. And, you know, and, and of course when I buy yarn, I'm buying way more than I probably need because I'm still in four and five X mode, you know, thinking I need all this because I need, because I'm so big, you know, uh, so I'm still, you know, in that mode, so, um, hopefully, I don't need many more, you know, uh, more than just, um, to finish the round that, that I, that I, lost, you know, ran out of yarn on, because this is, this is exactly where the, the, the skein ended, and so I just need to attach a new skein and, and finish this round, and then, you know, go as far as, you know, count, I, I'm going to count the rounds on this so that I have, you know, an idea how many, that the, the, cause see, here's, here's what's left of the skein for this one. And so I'll count and make sure I have the same amount of rounds on both sides. And then I'll, um, connect them with the uh, stitch markers and try it on and uh, see if that's, if that's comfortable to me. And then I'll, and if, if that's a good fit. Then I'll go ahead and seam it up and do some finishing work on it and call it done, because it's just a basic, basic uh, card cardigan, just enough, just enough to, uh, you know, m make make the dress look nice and dressy, you know, something to go to church in, that kind of thing. Um, that's all I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, win any beauty contests, because we know I'm not gonna do that. I am not a pretty woman. <laughs> So, you know, that's fine. But I just wanted to look, you know, uh, a little more cl uh, classy. You know, classy is what I'm going for. And so that's why I like the silver, the silver of this, the silver look of this yarn. And the fact that it's anti-peeling. So that means it won't, you know, it'll last longer. And I'm hoping to use this not just with the one dress that I bought, but with a couple of other little dresses that I recently bought from Walmart. So I can use it with multiple uh, outfits. And um, so, and I also started today that uh, new tutorial by Jada and Stitches that, uh, and of course I use the same yarn because I have plenty of this yarn, but that uh, new, um, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. I'm, I guess I'm doing it right. That bucket hat that Jada and Stitches put out like right around Easter, right before Easter, right before I went into the hospital. I saved it to my uh, one of my uh, playlists um, so that I could go back and try it. I'm I'm doing the repeat rounds now. Uh, I'll have to finish it, but um, I just kind of got fatigued with it. Um, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll get there, <laughs> and I'll finish this little bucket hat and see if that I don't know. I, I don't know if I like it or not. Uh, I just I was really struggling. I don't know if it's because it's all one color. It might be what it is because it's all one color. Uh, and I'm a little uh, over the whole solid color thing. <laughs> I'm a little over the whole solid color thing. Uh, let's see if I can move y'all to the side. And y'all can see. Oh, I got my my emotional support chicken that Serena made me. And then my worry, my worry worm dragon. Yep. Isn't that cute? Yeah, and the little pretty pen that she put with it. It's a little heart-shaped pen, and it's, it's got this little, I don't know if y'all can see, the, there's little gems in that little heart there. 
And that's from uh, Amy with Hooked on Wish, and she sent she sent me the little worm and, and the little heart thing, and I just put it on my chicken. But um, y'all can see a little more of the yarn here that I put out. I swapped out um, a lot of acrylic yarn um, for cotton. Um, this is cotton here, and that's some cotton ac acrylic up here. And then that's some of my bougie yarn over here. Um, I just, I have some, some wool of bougie yarn, but it's, it's over there. <laughs> I don't have room for everything. Um, that I had a healthcare worker come in and, um, let me grab this hook. Um, she came in and, um, she came in to, because this thing, this thing wouldn't flush yesterday. It wouldn't flush. Because uh, you have to, when you do the um, antibiotic, I have to, uh, excuse me, a little parched here. Strawberry water. I drink mostly water. I hardly ever drink a soda anymore. But, um, and when I do, it's diet Mountain Dew. But um, <laughs> I had to call home health aid, home health care, which I'm signed up for, you know, through the duration of this whole um infection business until until I get this line out of my arm hopefully this week because I'm a little tired of this this appendage anyway um but it stopped working it wouldn't it wouldn't flush I don't I don't I don't know what happened to it I really couldn't tell you I, it just wouldn't flush because you have to run a run a little syringe of flush through it before and after you do the antibiotic the antibiotic is is a, a thick consistency of medicine and um if you don't flush it before and after it'll it'll clog it up and i'm thinking maybe i didn't flush it good enough the last time before i tried to do it yesterday i don't i don't know why i did it i don't know but it wouldn't it wouldn't flush for me um before you know and so that i could move to the next step and attach my uh antibiotic and my antibiotic comes in these little uh balls and these little medicine ball things attached to a little um, tube that that connects to connects to the end of this, and then you just unclip this little thing, and it and it just runs all by itself, and it takes about 15, 20 minutes, and then it's done. And you unclip it, and then you flush it out again with another syringe of um, fl of saline solution. You you flush it out. You flush it out again. And then you wipe off the end and you attach an, a new a new cap because they give me a, a whole baggie of these little caps here. But um, anyhow, um, so she came, so she finally came out after two hours of waiting. She finally came, and she tried everything she could get do to get it to go. And she 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 even went and got some heparin, which is like a um, a, a blood a blood clot a medicine, you know. Uh, it, it breaks up blood clots. Heparin does. And I know that um, Llama Mama Kayla has had to deal with heparin because of her, her port in her chest. And so they have they use heparin to get to service her port. So I, I, I've heard her talk about that. And um, so she went out to her car and got some heparin and come in here and put it in there and, and still couldn't get it to go. And uh, this was about mm, close to seven o'clock. It was after six o'clock in the evening. And so she couldn't get it to go. She couldn't get it to go. And she said, well, you're just gonna have to go to the ER and let them work on it and see if they can get it going. And if not, they might have to replace it. And I'm like, ugh. Because I really didn't want to go to the ER because I was terrified that if they couldn't get it going, that they would admit me again. Um, and I didn't want to be admitted back into the hospital. I come so far and I just didn't want to be admitted for two two more, you know, for what, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday was, was all I got left on this medic, medication regimen, you know. And um, so uh, me and Johnny went up to the ER and um, I'm guessing that the heparin that she, she put in there, it had time to percolate, so to speak. And because by the time I got back there, a little male nurse got to working on this on on this thing, and in no time flat, he got it to flush no problem. And um, I'm I'm guessing that that heparin sat in there and worked on whatever clot or or blockage was in there. And so by the time that uh, the young man got got a hold of me and got got some flushing uh, syringes with the flushing solution in there, 
and he got to pushing it back and forth, back and forth. And then he was able to get several, you know, saline um, flushes to go through without a problem. And, uh, and I had brought my medicine ball with me. And, uh, and so I went ahead and, and, uh, hooked it up, ha handed it, you know, handed it to him and hooked it up and, it, and let it run while I was in the ER. And so he got, he got me fixed up and I didn't have to have it replaced, thank goodness. So I just took my antibiotic while I was in the ER and which didn't take long. And, uh, then he come back and he flushed it for me again and, uh, gave me a new cap and all that. Like, Cause you had to replace the cap each time that you do your, uh, medicine. But, um, so they got me fixed up and I, and I just left, I just walked out of the ER after, you know, I got fixed up and everything. And, um, so, um, that, that was a whole, maybe hour and a half at the ER. Not too bad. I, w I was real glad that I was able to just turn around and come, you know, get fixed up and then come back home. And then today, uh, me and Johnny did, um, did my antibiotic without a hitch today. So, um, the girl come this morning. Uh, she called and, and said that it was time to, to redo the dressing for it. So she had to, uh, this, this, this whole covering here is, is dressing. And so it was time to redo that. It had been five days since I got it. And so it was time to redo that. And so she came this morning and, and took it all, took all the covering and every, and replaced all that and cleaned it out and cleaned it up and it wasn't dirty or anything, but I'd been taking showers and it looked a little, you know, waterlogged maybe even though I tried to cover it with the you know I tried to cover it with a bag and some tape and it's still water still got in in um, but it was still good and sealed it didn't get into the the connect you know into the the midline itself it just you know got around it and kind of made it look a little rough in my opinion that after they examined it it the the seal around the the midline was not uh, penetrated by water it looked fine, but I thought it looked a little kind of icky, <laughs> but I'm picky like that. But, uh, now she come and replaced it. She made it a little tighter than it was. So it's a little more uncomfortable than it was to begin with, but I'm hoping that by Wednesday I can get it out. Um, I'm hoping, uh, I did make an appointment Wednesday with my mental health doctor because I have to get off of one of my mental health medicines, uh, which is called, a. Uh, Topamate, which is a generic uh, version of Topamax, which I take for bipolar disorder. And uh, I've been on that medicine since I think 2016 or 17. And it, cause it also treats my migraines. And um, now when I first started taking it, I was only on about 10 milligrams, I think. And I was looking through the, 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 um, side effects. I'm real sensitive to medicine side effects. I, I've always been real sensitive to that. And I, and one of the side effects is kidney stones. And I was like, crap, you know, it's, it's good for my migraines and good for my bipolar, but it's going to give me kidney stones. And so I addressed it with the doctor I had at the time. And they said, well, not, not at this low dosage. And I was like, oh, and well, I trusted the doctor. And, uh, well, uh, as time passed, uh, and, and my tolerance built, my dosage went up and, and it, and it creeped up, you know, and I, and I never thought twice about it. And of course, all this time I've been, you know, on and off struggling with kidney stones. And so I just didn't even think about it. And then, uh, when I had the kidney stone removal surgery, uh, the, uh, urologist, she called Will and told Will, look, this medicine is probably what the reason why she keeps getting kidney stones. You need to tell her that she needs to go see her doctor and get a different medicine for her bipolar. So, that's what I got to do. So, I called today and got an appointment for Wednesday morning. And so, we'll go get a different medicine. And so, surely, all this time, you know, eight years, you know, has passed. That there should be, um, sorry, weird bug. <laughs> When you have lights on and a back, you're near a back door, you tend to get little flying bugs. But anyway, um, so hopefully there's one that also takes care of migraines. Otherwise, I'll have to go get my GP, my regular doctor, to give me a separate migraine medicine, which I will deal with, uh, you know, because I'd rather deal with that than kidney stones again. 
but I haven't discontinued taking the medication since the uh, kidney stone, um, op, you know, surgery and everything because I didn't want to turn into a basket case because that's what my bipolar does to me. It, it makes me manic depressive. It makes me cry all the time. It makes me cry at everything. And um, I'm already struggling with depression uh, because of the health situation and um, the fact that I have been through so much since the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, November 1st, I had gastric bypass and hernia repair, and it took me, what, two months to, re to really recover from that. And then uh, about the time I got recovered from that, um, then the kidney, st I mean, and then I've been going through this kidney stone s situation since the beginning of February. And, um, you know, so it's just, it's just like, I can't, it, I feel like I can't win. You know, I really just feel like I can't win. And, um, it's, it's just really, it really makes you angry and it really makes you sad and it's very lonely. I know I have all of y'all support and I have my besties and my boys, um, but it's just very, you know, you know, no one can really relate unless they've been here, you know, <sighs> because I was just starting to get my life back, you know. I was just starting to get my energy back. And then I felt like I got smacked down. You know, it was just really... I don't know. I don't know what to... You know, I don't know what what to uh, make of it. It just really takes a lot out of you. It takes the wind right out of your sails, you know. Makes you just want to cry. And um, my my poor dog, Theo, is over there on my bed. He's about to sleep now. We've had thunderstorms here tonight. And um, Theodore is really afraid of thunderstorms. I've, I've never seen a pit bull like that, you know. And he didn't seem to get that way until we moved here in July of 2022. We moved here to this house at, at, from a trailer that we used to live in in the country. And I don't remember him being that way before we moved here. But when we moved here, he got afraid of storms. He he gets really, you know, just very anxiety-ridden. And wants to be coddled, you know, and loved on and, and told that it's going to be okay. And uh, he, he, mainly get, he mainly wants my oldest son, Will. Uh, Will's not here right now. And so, you know, I, I, apparently mom will do. <laughs> Mom's bed specifically will do. Because I guess it smells like me. And uh, then there's poor Axel. My senior dog. Uh, well, Theo is not a puppy. He's eight. But Axel is uh, Rethink. Because we're like his third rescuer. Third or fourth rescuer. We got him in 2019. We were told then that he was approximately seven years old. I think he was a lot older. But... Um, the other day, uh, was it yes day before yesterday? Me and John came back from dinner, and um, we we went to go let them out the back door to do their business, and Axel was in this chair. He got out of this chair and come around. There's a little tote. There's a little tote box right there that I have a project in, and he went around that box and then he just fell out. Axel is a kind of, he, he's, he comes up just past my knees. He's kind of a tall dog. And then he weighs about 80-something 80, 80 pounds. He's, he's almost 90 pounds. He's a big dog. Really big dog. I see you, baby. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, y'all might get some turbulence. I'm going to move it here a little bit. It's fine. Um, y'all see big, big brown dog. <laughs> but, um, and then Axel just fell out. And um, and then he lost control of his bowels, he, and um, he, he pooped a little bit, and then he would just breathe real heavy for about ten minutes, and then he just seemed to come out of it. And uh, but he he just laid there for the longest, and um, for the last several days he's just he just picks a spot and just lays, and he, he like if you asked him to move he just kind of looks at you like really, I'm not moving. And um, now I did um, discover that. These these doggy aspirin do help him, so I think it's arthritis. 
Um, but he's also thrown up a couple of times. So I'm hesitant to give him any more of those because he's thrown up. So I don't know. Because I have to pry his mouth open and then put, put those on the back of his mouth for him to, to, for him to swallow because he won't chew them. Now, Theo... I could put in I could open his mouth and he doesn't he's not bothered by things put in, in the back of his mouth at all. You would think a pit bull and he's 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 gone and laid down now. But you would think a pit bull would be a little more defensive of his mouth, but he's not. He's just he's just that easy of a dog. I could just open his mouth and stick my hand down the back of his throat and he's not bothered by that at all. And uh, of course I've been doing it since he was a puppy because we got him, he, I think he was less than a year when we got him, I don't know. But um, I, that's how I trained him, and because and, he had skin allergies when we got him, and his, his skin would break out and stuff, so I started giving him Benadryl. And um, that that's my delivery system, is I would open his mouth and stick it down the back of his throat and then massage his, his, his neck to get him to swallow it. And, and somebody said, I can't believe you just open his, uh, you just stick your hand right down his, in his mouth. And it was just a matter of trust, you know, me and him just, you know, having that strong connection between us and then him just trusting me. And, um, and it's just never been a thing. You know, a lot of people would be scared to death to put their hand in the mouth of a pit bull. He's my pit bull. So, you know, I, I never been scared of him ever. And, and, but he's not, a he's not a barking dog. You know, he's, he's very rarely, would you even hear him bark? He's just not a barking. He just not. He's not one of those bark, a real loud barking dog. And Axel only barks if someone knocks on the front door. And 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 a lot of times he's late. <laughs> like they'll be halfway in the door and then he'll bark. <laughs> it's like you're a little late there, buddy. <laughs> but he, you know, he's you know, a delayed guard dog. But he he wouldn't do anything either. He's just. Uh, and he has that loud, deep uh, hound dog type bark, you know, that that black lab bark. But it, it's kind of seldom that, to hear him bark either. Uh, unlike the six Labradoodles that live next door. <laughs> if you burn around the channel long enough, you know the Labradoodle story. So, but they they have strangely been very quiet since I come home from the hospital. It's almost like I don't know. Johnny thinks something must have happened to Shadow, the cat, the black cat that loved to torture the dogs and, and, and rile them up and get them barking. Johnny thinks something happened to Shadow, uh, which is a black stray cat that had been kind of torturing the dogs and getting them riled up on, on, a, on a daily. So it's possible. It's possible that something happened to that stray cat. Very possible. We had a stray cat um, a while ago, probably a year or so ago, that uh, we were feeding and uh, and that would actually let us pet her. She would she we called her Melly, and she was a beautiful little uh, stripy cat, and um, she got hit and killed by a car. It about broke my heart. It really did. And I swore I would not uh, feed another outdoor cat. I would not get attached to another outdoor cat. And I and I hadn't got attached to Shadow, uh, other than naming him. Because he, you can't get, you couldn't get close to him. You can't get close to him. Um, you, you can't even talk at him, or because he'll, he'll run. As soon as you start talking at him, he'll run. So <laughs> there's no getting attached to Shadow. That's why I call him Shadow because that's all you see because he just runs. <laughs> but. Um, I, sh I meant to be crocheting while I'm talking to y'all, but it just didn't turn out that way. I just showed y'all what I'd worked on. Um, I do have um, my scrap uh, granny square project that I started before I went in the hospital. Uh, see if I can get to that. I have to move stuff on top of that box. Hold on a second. stuff on top of the box too hold on buddy hold on don't get your panties in a wad and what did i do with the hook yep the hook is still in there okay all right so this is what is started here uh it's just a oh let's see if i can get it back to where it was this is a nine millimeter clover hook 
yeah, nine millimeter clover hook. And I'm using two strands, of course. And I got a floppy Karen one pounder in here. And then this is a um, big twist uh, twinkle. Yeah, twinkle. So I had just a couple of floppies that I started with in here. And so this is this is what uh, I started with as far as my scrap uh, granny square. And now I, what I did is I'm do I, I decided I would take a page out of Juan's book and not um, and not chain uh, between uh, clusters because I like the tight. I, I did that with something else, and I, I really liked, uh, I did that when I made my granny square blanket. I liked, I liked the tightness of it. I liked how it looked. It looked more neater to me, and so uh, that's what I'm doing with this. I'm not going to chain between clusters, and I'm only going to do the chain two in the corners, you know. But uh, this is a bit of a workout, <laughs> working with two strands. I haven't worked with two strands in quite some time, so this is a little bit of a workout for me. Plus, with I, I'm struggling with my energy level since I got home. I haven't had a lot of the energy. Um, I can barely open a can of soup, and um, and that's really not good. John's done most of that. Um, oh, and I, I'm mean, gonna talk talk to y'all about my Johnny. Uh, I know I don't. Uh, some of y'all are kind of new, and um, might not know that I have an autistic. 24 year old son um and he's pretty much my right hand man and uh my best friend and um he spent that entire five days that i was in the hospital by my side i can't tell y'all how much that meant to me he could have went home at any time i offered to have will come get him and take him home so he could be in his room with his playstation and you know have the comforts of home instead of being up there in the hospital eating terrible food and sharing my meals with me because they half the time there was only maybe two or three times that they that I, they actually brought a second tray for him but mostly he he would just you know share whatever I they brought me which I could barely eat what they brought so he he mostly ate what they brought because I couldn't eat it and um but that boy, I can't tell you how wonderful that boy is. There's just not enough words in the vocabulary to explain it. He wouldn't leave my side. He helped me keep my sanity because I was really slipping. His birthday is next month on the 27th. And if y'all have the time and a postage stamp and, and, a, and a little bit for a birthday card, I'd really appreciate it if y'all would send Johnny a birthday card. Uh, our our happy mail address is in the description box. If y'all would send Johnny a birthday card for his birthday next month, I'd really appreciate it. Y'all don't have to do, do anything spectacular, just a birthday card. He really likes to see all the birthday cards from all the different states and everything. It, it, we've done this uh, the last couple of years, and I think he got one, one year he got one from Sweden Last year, he got one from England, and he just gets really excited about all the different places they come from and reading them, and uh, and he deserves it. He really deserves everything. He really does. He deserves everything I could possibly think to give him. I spoil him every chance I get. Um, I went to the store yesterday because we, we thought we were going to have some company today or tomorrow, and so we wanted to spruce the house up a little bit. So I went to get some cleaning supplies and a, a new new shower curtain and a new rug for our bathroom, and um, and I bought. I, I, he I asked him what kind of chips did he want, and he said, well, either you know, he gave me two different kinds. So I got him a bag of each. <laughs> I didn't want him to have to choose, and um, of course I took him out to dinner the other night, and he's like, you're spoiling me, and I'm like, every chance I get, every chance I get, and. Um, and of course, my my finances have taken a little bit of a hit because um, my oldest son has decided to stop paying me rent. Um, we had a bit of a a kerfuffle. Um, Will, uh, when I was struggling and fighting for my disability, 
from 2016 to 2022. He helped support me and John while I was fighting for my disability, okay? And I bragged and bragged on him every chance I got. got. And I was so grateful that he did that, that he helped support us and worked and helped support us. What I didn't anticipate was his resentment uh, for doing so. He strongly feels like I robbed him of his 20s. He feels like I manipulated him into doing that for, for me and John. And, um, and he really resented me that I was charging him rent to live here after he supported me and John for all those years. And so, and of course he would, he would come at me like with that, uh, when I was in my, in, in a weekend state, you know, having to take antibiotics via IV here at home and stents still in my kidneys and, and mentally I'm still not a hundred percent. And, um, so I just said, whatever, just don't pay, you know, just whatever. So, um, I don't have that money every week now. So all I have is mine and John's disability and the little bit of money I get from YouTube now. So there's not going to be a whole lot of yarn hauls now. Um, I'm going to, you know, you'll see me cut way back on buying yarn. Um, just, I just am. So, um, I got some money in savings from the mystery bags I sold. I probably will go back through my stash and sell some more mystery bags um, just to make sure that I sure up enough to do John's birthday like I want to do it because he's turning 25 and I want to make sure I do his birthday up good and you know plus I need to take my dogs to the vet that costs money so um, just to let y'all know there won't be a whole lot of yarn hauls uh, in my near future um, but um, I will do as many videos as possible because that's how we make money on YouTube. Um, I'm just trying to get through this health crisis so that I can start bringing more content, um, you know, to try to make progress on some projects and that sort of thing. But I never anticipated being verbally and um, emotionally beat up on by my oldest child or that he would resent the fact that he uh, stepped up to the plate when I needed him and helped take care of me while I fought for disability. I didn't, I didn't feel like I hadn't manipulated him into doing that, but he feels that way. And um, I feel like the worst parent in the world. So um, I got one child that's an angel and that I is my best friend and one that, you know, that half hates me. So, um, what do you do? I'm really struggling, you know, mentally, because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to uh, make this up to him. He throws it in my face every time I turn around. And, um, well, I can't go back in the past and change it, you know? I mean, he almost acts like I can go back and change it. I can't. You know, I, I don't know how he expects to live life to the fullest if you keep looking backwards, you know. Um, but um, anyway, I digress. This video is getting pretty long. But uh, th this is what's going on with me with projects. I'm, you know, going to try as, as I have energy to get through what I'm doing. I have a whole box here of, of scrap yarn and um, floppies that I'm working with. Um, what I do with the lid. I shove the lid over there across the room. <laughs> but I'll get back to that as I have energy to do so. Um, I'm just going to just have to keep taking naps as I, as I need them. And um, hopefully in the next week or two I will be back on my feet and feeling better. Um, this uh, bacteria infection just really just uh, took, took, the, took the energy right out of me. Um, I didn't know that that could happen. Um, I'd never been through anything like that before. Um, but it definitely did. And so um, I went from a routine surgery to, you know, septic in four days. So, um, and now it's, you know, wreaked all kinds of havoc. 
But I'm going to get through it. Jesus is going to see me through it like he always does. I don't know if this is the kind of video y'all were looking for, but <laughs> this is the kind of video you got. <laughs> I will, this too shall pass, as they say, and I will be okay. Um, just some life changes that I didn't anticipate, and um, but I will roll with it as I always do. And um, y'all will see more content from me as soon as I can get back on my feet healthy. Uh, otherwise, there'll be a couple of days in between videos, and um, I'll do the best I can by you, okay? Anyway, with that, uh, please remember that I love you, and so does Jesus. And please remember to adopt, don't shop. Your best friend could be waiting for you at the shelter or the rescue. And I'll see you next time. Bye now.